the summer physics programs. And so thank you for being with us this afternoon. Um, that was my colleague, Rachel Rigoli, one of our other advisors, and um, Rachel's helping me with technical issues this afternoon. Um, so we're happy to have you all here to learn about the UCEAP summer physics programs. Uh, there will be uh, plenty of time at the end of the session for um, your que questions and answers. So you can be thinking about those as we um, move through the presentation. And, um, and we'll go ahead and, and get started. So Rachel, do you wanna advance the slide? Thank you. So before we start defining what, the, what these programs are, I did want to say a few words about COVID-19. Uh, and we do expect and are, well, hopefully optimistic that the summer physics programs will run um, this coming summer. Um, however, you know, we're not in control, obviously, of the, the virus situation globally and uh, things may come up. And so we strongly encourage all of you who are looking at summer programs for next year to have a plan B in place um, for your summer in case these programs are not able to run. Um, again, we're hopefully optimistic they will and we are moving forward as if they will. Um, but again, we don't know what might happen. So we wanna make sure that you all have other things to do in the summer um, should the programs uh, not happen. So um, what is summer physics or OCHEM abroad? So uh, basically you can spend eight weeks in the summer and complete the equivalent of the physics one series um, to meet your UCSD life sciences uh, requirements. And, um, and it's an option that a number of our students choose every year uh, for a number of reasons that we'll be talking about. So next slide. Thanks. So a few facts and figures. So again, eight week program, Mostly mid-June to mid-August, uh, there have been a, a few uh, shifts in dates. Um, one program starting um, the end of June, and then the program in Sydney starts July 5th, um, but and ends late August. But uh, they're all more or less in this time frame, and definitely after spring quarter ends uh, in June. You will take two classes that are equivalent to the one year of physics or organic chemistry here on campus. Uh, you will earn 12 UC quarter units. There are four locations that are pre-approved and we'll be talking about those uh, later on in the presentation. And then the budget range that you see here, and we'll talk a little bit more about the budgets and financing also later in the session. Um, but these budgets include an estimate for everything. These are summer 2021 estimates. Um, and everything means your tuition for the 12 units, your, all of your housing expenses, all of your meals, your airfare round trip there and back, and then any incidentals that you might have like laundry, uh, shampoo, local bus passes, all of that. So everything you need to do uh, is included in the program budget. What's not included in the budgets uh, would be any sort of personal travel that you want to do. So while you're on whatever continent you're on, if you're going to explore, um, obviously on the weekends, that would be something that you would obviously need to pay for that's not in the budget. Um, also, if you're going to go out every night to a different restaurant, to the movies, to a club, to the opera, whatever your interests are, obviously personal expenses not in. And then if you're going to buy souvenirs, uh, not included in the budget but everything to do the program is included in the budgets. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about those um, in detail when we get there. Next, Rachel. Okay, so this has, this has cascading titles, so you keep going. Okay, so these are, this is an outline of our topics. You can go ahead and populate them all. Thanks, Rachel. Um, this is a, an outline of our topics and there's a slide about each of these. So uh, you can keep going, no problem. And, uh, and so we'll get into talking about all of these um, in particular. So thanks, Rachel, you can go ahead. Okay, so one of the main things that you need to know is that taking these courses um, abroad for eight weeks is, is not the easy way out. Um, these are definitely uh, challenging and rigorous programs, but they're also hugely rewarding. And our students who do this every summer uh, really get a lot out of it and, um, and really enjoy the experience. So you really, uh, if you're going to do this, you really need to commit to the program and to the subject matter uh, while you're there. A few things to keep in mind is that, you know, if you're going to do the, the summer physics, 
um, you're probably not going to be, you know, saddled with any other responsibilities. So you're not going to have other courses that you need to focus on and worry about. Uh, you're not going to have, you know, a part-time job. Uh, you're not going to be doing things for your family, uh, not student organizations. So all of the things that students are normally involved in during the academic year, you're not going to have pressing on you. So our students do fine for the most part with the programs as long as you're going to class and studying the material and you know paying attention and being active and being involved, uh, you should be fine. But it is, it is a commitment. And so we wanna make sure that you understand that um, before you move forward. Please note, as it says in the top bullet, that UCEAP courses do factor into your UCSD GPA. And you know, not everyone is going to get an A, a B, or a C. There are students who fail every year. I'm sure not any UC San Diego students, but, um, but it is important to note that you do need to be there, as I said, committed, paying attention, and participating. A couple of other things is these courses are not graded on a curve. So that means that all of you have the opportunity to get good, strong grades uh, if you put in that work. And then again, as I mentioned, students are not distracted by other courses um, you know, while you're on the program. And they're all, you're all UC students that are doing this together. And so the cohorts really help each other. So you'll have a lot of opportunity to study with your peers, to be in class with your peers, to work in labs with your peers, and everybody helps everybody else. And so it's actually a really nice uh, environment for our students. And then just one caveat, you know, do note that if you do fail courses, you cannot retake them um, here to fix your GPA. So it's important to, um, to get in and start on a positive note and continue through the program. Thanks, Rachel. If you're interested in the program in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, they operate on something called a flipped design program. And so basically what that means is that you will be um, responsible for reading a material before class and complete certain assignments and online readings in preparation for the course. And then when you get to class, then your time is going to be spent getting with your tutor, getting a deeper understanding of the material and then um, you know, diving in with, um, with labs and also with group learning. So the model is, is a little bit different in Glasgow than it is in the other locations. Um, some students really thrive in this environment and really enjoy it and others may want more of a traditional model, but it's just uh, something to be aware of. Next. Uh, the eligibility is pretty basic, as you can see here. Um, the GPA is a little bit higher for Glasgow because of that flipped model classroom. Um, and then you can see the course requirements um, required before departure. Uh, if any of you are freshmen or transfers and you currently don't have a UC GPA, that's not a problem. Uh, you can go ahead and start your application and complete everything except for the transcript. And um, after your fall quarter, this fall quarter, grades are in, you're simply going to upload that transcript and submit your application by January 4th. And when I say transcript, that can be an academic history printed from Triton Link. We don't require that students submit official transcripts, but you can also get them now and there's no cost. Um, you've all paid a fee to get as many transcripts as you need for your life. Uh, and so you certainly can get a transcript, but that academic history um, printed from Triton Link is also acceptable. So this should be for all students. We don't want that transcript uploaded until after fall 2020 grades are posted on your transcript. Uh, yes, if you are any of you are seniors and you want to participate, you can uh, do the program the summer after senior year. There are a couple of caveats. You do need to check with your college academic advisor about delaying your graduation because what would happen is you can still walk in the ceremony in June. Um, however, um, you must be a currently enrolled UC student while you are abroad. Go ahead, Rachel. I think there's more bullets. Yep. And then, um, so you cannot graduate before summer because you must be a UC student. Um, but then you, we would graduate basically um, in September or once the grades are reported. So um, it's important to know, as it says here in the third bullet, that your degree will not be conferred until the coursework is posted. And this can take up to 90 days from the end of the program. So 
if the program ends in mid-August, actually it would it would potentially be a December graduation. So, um, so that's just something that you need to be aware of if you're going to participate as a senior. And also if you want to use financial aid after your senior year, then that's something that you would need to talk about with, um, with our in-house financial aid advisor, um, Tina Brilli, and all of you actually participating can meet with Tina and, and talk about the financial aid pieces. And we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes as well. And then what about medical school? Yeah, you can populate all those, Rachel. There's a couple more. Perfect. Um, oops. There you go. So, you know, this curriculum is, is to satisfy your UCSD requirements, not necessarily med school requirements. Um, the coursework is converted. It shows as UC credit, you would provide the med schools your UCSD transcript, not a transcript from your host institution abroad. Um, again, the grades may not be posted to your record until mid-September. So again, for seniors who are going straight on to med school, that might be an issue, something to think about. Um, we make no promises, but historically, UC San Diego students have not had any issues um, with taking this requirement and then getting into med school. Um, and I confirmed that with um, our colleague at the system-wide office who works with all UC students who've done this program. And uh, we're not aware of anyone who's had a question from a medical school application or medical school about this requirement being done abroad. So, however, ultimately it's your responsibility to check in with those med schools but just know that the track record has been just fine. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, locations. So the four locations on the left um, have been approved by the UC San Diego Physics Department to meet the, the one first year physics requirement. So Dublin, Sussex, Glasgow, and Sydney. And so these are the program, these are the locations we're gonna concentrate on for today. Um, and then you can see if any of you are interested in the organic chemistry option, that's available at Dublin. There are some additional locations for this program on the right. These have not been approved by the UCSD physics department. I would not advise you to do these at all. Um, you could go and do the program and come back and petition the courses, but the physics department might say no. And then you would have spent all that money and that time and you would have to retake physics. So um, we really do not want you to do any of those on the right. We're sorry that they're not approved, um, but it is up to the physics department. So we're gonna focus on um, those approved locations. And we've been sending students to these locations for many years and again, um, have a lot of good feedback about them. So thanks, Rachel. Okay, we also have a comparison chart um, of the four approved programs and um, I checked today and, and we had updated this actually Rachel had done that and um, I didn't see it posted to our website, but it will be up there shortly by the by the end of next week. Um, I will make sure that it gets posted. Um, it is there. There is also a comparison chart on the UCEAP website. Um, if you look at any of these locations uh, in the academic section, I believe there's a link that would take you there. Um, but if you're still debating where it is you might want to go, then the comparison chart can be a good resource for you. All right, so we'll look, give you a few minutes to look at these locations in a little more detail. So uh, if, and I've not been to any of these locations uh, myself, um, but we do have um, return students from 2019 because obviously the programs didn't happen this past summer in 2020. And I'm working on getting some contact information for the students. So if you're interested in, in reaching out to any of them, um, please let me know and my contact information is at the end of the session. And, um, and I can follow up with you about that. I wasn't able um, to get a hold of anybody before today, um, but we should have students and we certainly do across the UC system who can answer any questions for you. So um, I don't need to read you all these slides, but I think it's nice to you know, to get a sense and obviously to look at the picture so you have a sense of the location. Um, again, I think all, all of the locations except for Sussex, which is a smaller city, are, you know, over a million people. So, um, you know, definitely busy places with lots to do. And then in terms of the housing, um, it's nice that we have the, the pictures here so you get a sense of what the housing is like uh, and uh, the brief description. And then I noticed under the meals, it, it talks about, you know, students have the, the fees include the meal plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, but I want you to know that um, the program budget that you'll get from EAP that I mentioned earlier will include 
all of your meals, including your weekend meals, because we know you need to eat on the weekends. So the actual fees that you pay, you know, ahead of time will include the, the meal plans, but the budgets include meal, you know, so that you can eat obviously every day. So just want to make sure you're all aware of that. So that's Dublin. And then, oh yes, there's a quote. Well, let's leave that up for a second, Rachel. So there, there are quotes from students um, who have been on these programs that I think are helpful. So I'll give you a second to read that. And this is something that I've that I've seen in a number of comments from students that the the faculty who are teaching these are really, uh, really helpful and really interested in in making this a successful, positive experience for our students. So. Thanks, Rachel, you can go ahead. Okay, and then Sussex um, is actually seaside and is only uh, an hour and 20 minute train ride from London. So, um, and I believe Sussex was the first location that had summer physics. And um, so again, we've had a number of students who've, um, who've been here at Sussex, um, but there's a lot to do and a lot going on, particularly in the summer. Um, in Brighton, which is where the university is. And then you can see the, the housing options here um, in Sussex as well. Uh, and again, the same comment about the meals. And you can see here too that they do have, you know, communal kitchens so that you can um, decide if you want to cook for yourself, you do have that option. Thanks, Rachel, you can go ahead. Okay, and then Glasgow, again, large city. Um, one of the cool things about Glasgow, you can see the castle in the lower right was uh, the inspiration for Hogwarts. So those of you that are Harry Potter fans um, may wanna look at this, or at least you can go visit um, if, if any of you are studying in, elsewhere in the UK. Um, but again, an, another large city that you would be able to explore. And then um, for Glasgow, it looks like students are all doing um, their own meals in the, in the communal kitchen. And that's a great way to obviously hang out and uh, get to know the other UC students. And then here, the students talking about that different system of learning that we talked about. Um, for Glasgow, the flipped classroom, um, you know, she's saying she really preferred that system. And again, it would be a different, it's going to be a different academic uh, experience for all of you in all of the locations. Um, and so it's just a matter of deciding where you think you would be the most comfortable. And then Sydney. So this is the only one of our programs in the uh, summer hemisphere. Um, it will be winter there. So uh, you do need to be aware of that. Um, but obviously Sydney major capital, you know, in Australia, or actually it's not major city in Australia. So, um, a, a great place to be. And then, um, here's information about the Sydney program. And again, um, students are preparing their own meals, um, in Sydney. Okay, so there's, I think there's like four bullets on here, Rachel, you can put them up. Great, thanks. So a little bit about the application process. Um, and we're going to go over each of these. There are different slides, but um, basically you're going to decide on a location, uh, do applications in the EAP portal and the Tritons Abroad portal, uh, and then you're going to wait to receive nomination information, and then you will start on pre-departure documents. And again, we're going to go over all of these. So you can go ahead, Rachel. Okay, so choosing a program, um, if any of you are looking at organic chemistry, there's one location, um, you know, Dublin, and, and that is the application that you will do. For summer physics, um, you want to choose a first choice destination, and then also choose a couple of alternate locations in case we're not able to place students in your first choice destination. Um, having said that, however, um, it appears that we will have uh, more spaces in all locations this year um, because of COVID. Some of, some of the other campuses that send a lot more students aren't sending as many and there've been some changes. And so it's looking like 
um, you know, we'll, we will have more spaces in all locations. So I'm very hopeful that most, if not all of you would get your first choice destination, uh, but we still need you to think about um, the two alternate locations uh, in case we're not able to honor your first choice. And just a reminder that the UCSD application deadline is the Monday, the first Monday of winter quarter, so January 4. Um, and uh, so just, you know, be aware of that that's coming up pretty quickly. Go ahead, Rachel. Okay, in terms of applications, um, we have our database, which is Tritons Abroad. Uh, the EAP, there's a system-wide office for UC EAP that happens to be in Santa Barbara. They're the ones that, um, that develop all the programs. They manage them as they run. Once we select students on, from the campuses, they take over with a lot of the pre-departure information and processes. And so that's the UC EAP portal, which you can access from the UC EAP website. And unfortunately, the two portals don't talk to each other. And um, so that's why we need you to work in both of them. But it's really not, uh, it's not a lot of work or a lot of um, the same work that you're doing uh, in both places. So in terms of Tritons Abroad, you can access that from our website if you haven't done that already. Um, you know, you'll put in basic information for us. There is that reminder about the, the transcript or academic history from Triton Link. And again, please wait until fall 2020 grades are posted before you uh, upload that to us. You're also going to find uh, a UC San Diego academic planning form. And on the planning form, uh, you're going to list the, the physics courses that you will take uh, on the program. And then you will have this signed by your major department and also by your college. And that's so you're notifying them that you're doing this. And they're also giving you, you know, information. Yes, are these courses going to count for you meeting your requirements? And if you're close to graduation, when the college signs it, you'd be talking to them about those issues. So that's it's more of a notification, but also information for you to know that yes, these courses are going to work for your academic plan. And then, as I mentioned, you know, these can be competitive in terms of the locations. And so please do add up to two alternate locations. You will find in Tritons Abroad, we're asking you to write a short essay. Um, and then please follow the prompts that basically you're telling us why you've chosen the locations you've chosen and why you would prefer your first choice location. So that's the purpose of the essays. And then in the EAP portal, you'll be filling out the basic application form for them and then um, also passport copy. And I strongly encourage you, if you don't have a passport that's valid six months beyond the end date of the program, that you apply now um, because you will need to have that uh, fairly soon. All right, and then by February, all of you should know that if you've cleared the eligibility criteria, both from our office and from UCEAP, and you will receive notification email um, as to where you've been placed. And then there will be more paperwork. And so again, all of these instructions will come from UCEAP and they will be in the portal uh, in your application. And uh, depending on where you're going, you know, you may need to do a, a brief uh, host institution application. Um, and then there will be other documents you'll need to sign and submit and, you know, and keep in touch with EAP. So they will give you all of that. And again, it's all in the portal. So you're able to reference it. All right, so we can talk a little bit more about um, the budgets. And as I mentioned, um, you know, the, you will get um, a budget from UCAP once they've determined the exact budget for the program. It will be accessible in your portal. And you, that would be a detailed budget item by item, you know, what you're paying for what, um, along with the payment deadlines and how you make those payments. And actually, there's more information about that on the next slide. So if you are not a financial aid recipient, um, you can expect a first payment of $950, usually due April 1st um, to UCAP, and then a final payment, your remaining balance, um, usually due June 1st. And again, check those dates this year um, just to make sure, but those are the standard dates. If you would be a financial aid recipient um, hoping to get aid for summer of 21, um, you do not need to make that first payment of 950 because UCAP knows that's going to come out of your financial aid. And then once your financial aid package is determined um, and, and UCAP is notified, then you would pay any remaining balance uh, to UCEAP by June 1st. And I think, um, no, go ahead, Rachel, I'm trying to remember if 
Tina's mentioned in any other slide, but I can't remember. Um, some other things to remember, there are some fees that you may need to pay upfront um, that are outside of what you would be paying to use the EAP. So there may be a host university application fee, uh, there may be a housing to pay payment or a deposit. Um, and then of course your airfare, you're going to you know, pay for that out of pocket um, and whatever ticket you can find. That's why there's a range listed here. And then um, if you withdraw after April 1st, which is usually the withdrawal date, then you would have at minimum a $500 fee and it gets more expensive as it gets closer to departure. So again, all of those details will appear in your budget when you get that for the program, but just some things to be aware of. Okay, so financial aid. Um, if you are a financial aid recipient during the academic year, then you know you may be eligible for summer financial aid. Uh, financial aid includes grants and loans. When we talk about financial aid, it's not just gift money, it does include loans. Um, in recent years, uh, the UCSD summer grant maximum has been about $2,000. And again, it fluctuates depending on your need as identified by your FAFSA form. And then um, we've also had summer Pell Grant, which is federal funding up to $2,000. Um, Congress has to pass that um, legislation every year to allow Pell Grant for summer. So we don't yet know if that will happen for this year, but we're hopeful. Um, and so this would be the maximum amount of grant money that any student would be getting, even the neediest student. So you can see there's a big difference you know, between that grant money total and the program totals. So that's where then um, loans would come in or if you've got other money, you know, that you can contribute, whatever it might be, obviously to reduce the loan. And we'll talk about scholarships in a second too. Um, but because summer is considered, it's not a regular quarter of the academic year, which is what we mean by non-essential term. And so financial aid tends to be, you know, loan heavy. Uh, and so they're sort of inevitable um, if you're going to be studying abroad in the summer. If any of you do get the CalVet waiver, you can use that. And um, your summer aid need would be based on your um, 2021 FAFSA that you've already filed. So even though, you know, come March 2nd, you will file your 21-22 FAFSA, um, your aid for summer 21 will be based on your current FAFSA and your current need that's identified. Okay, and scholarships. So scholarships are a way that students can reduce the amount of loan that you have in your aid package, and we all want that for you. So um, there are scholarships that are need-based, there are scholarships that are merit-based, and uh, some are a combination of the two. So um, this is giving you a general idea of the kinds of scholarships that are available. But if you look at the bottom where I added the line with the asterisk, we're still assessing scholarship availability for summer 21. So there are you know, offices on campus that normally have study abroad scholarships and, and we don't know because of the budget situation if they will this year. There are private donors, there are um, all of the colleges usually have study abroad scholarships and we've only heard from two so far. So we're hoping by January to have all of that nailed down, um, but it's a challenge for folks this year just because of the fiscal situation. But um, we did wanna give you an idea of, of some of the scholarships. So the Gilman scholarships, those are federal government funded awards. They will be offered for next summer. Uh, and so you can uh, Google that and, um, and see what that's all about. Students must be Pell Grant recipients or Pell eligible to be eligible for the Gilman scholarships. We also know that UCAP will, will offer the Promise Awards as identified here um, for next summer. Um, we don't know yet about our office and, and the others that are listed here, um, but we've given you the link to the funding information. And again, hope to have that all of this nailed down by January. Most of the applications will open like now or into winter quarter and close, you know, anytime in winter quarter. So, um, you know, you have, we're not missing out on dates yet, but that's why we're working to get you that information by January. Thanks, Rachel. And then um, before we get into questions and there's actually um, a couple more slides that I want you to put up. Um, there was a reference to Tina in, in the slide about funding. So we have an in-house financial aid advisor. Her name is Tina Brilly. And um, once you've identified a location, you know, your first choice location where you wanna go, you can um, 
scheduling a Zoom appointment with Tina. And she also does uh, financial aid information sessions. She's been doing them on Wednesdays. I believe there's one tomorrow and then not again until January. Um, but she can help you determine, give you an idea of what your financial aid package for summer might look like. And so if, if that's helpful to you, I encourage you to meet with her. But again, that's something you can do in winter quarter. Um, so it, it's not something immediate, but I did want you to know we do have an in-house financial aid advisor whose focus is solely um, on study abroad. And then Rachel, if you can put up the next slide um, and then just go ahead and do all the links. It's Lisa's got it rolling again. So I, I looked at some of these blogs a while ago oops, and, uh, and they were really helpful. There's videos that students have posted and this can, these can really give you a lot of valuable information from a student perspective about the different locations, about the academics, about the things. And, and students all say, and I meant to say this earlier, they all say there's plenty of time on the weekends to go out exploring, to travel you know, further afield from where you're studying. So if you're focused and in class and working during the week, you, know, you will have time certainly in the evening and then also on the weekends uh, to travel and, and see some of the world around you. So I think that that's, that's really important. Important. So, um, Rachel, do you want to let me know where we are with questions? Sure. Why don't I go ahead and read questions? And then, if there are any participants that want to go ahead and raise their hand and feel comfortable um, with me unmuting them, we could do that as well. So, um, I've been answering a few questions behind the scenes, Kim. Okay, but, great. No um, some, some I thought might be better to just to have you answer live. Uh, so one student asked, will we need to put our second choice location somewhere in either of the applications? Right. So in Triton's Abroad uh, is where you'll find the, the guidelines for the essay, the short answer essays about the location. So that's the only place. So you should apply to, if Sussex is your first choice, you should do the application for Sussex. And then you would do the short essay answer so we know what your alternate locations would be. But that's the only place. It doesn't go into UCEAP. It's just for us. Okay, so um, this question came up a couple times. Um, students wanted to know if they should wait until their fall quarter grades have been posted to then submit their application. Uh, yes, because we need we need well we need that transcript uploaded in Triton's Broad. So yes. Yeah. If, if anybody runs into an issue where, you know, it's January 4 and your grades aren't posted, then please, by all means, go ahead and, and submit it. But I think, I think all should be fine. Okay, so the next question is for students on the pre-med track, is it okay to take this course the summer after your second year? Or is it highly recommended to go abroad and take it after your first year? I don't know the answer to that question. It might be something to check with a pre-med advisor. I, I know students have taken it every summer, you know, whenever they could get, whenever they could get into the program or get there or it worked for them. Um, I don't know that there would be any reason you'd need to take it sooner rather than later, but I would encourage you to check with, with pre-med on that in case I'm not aware of something. Okay, the last question, and it's um, somewhat general, and I thought it might be nice to answer this. Um, does this program cover major or general ed requirements specifically Ravel and EBE majors? So I thought you might wanna talk about, um, besides the fact that this is a physics program, what alternatives we have for study abroad for, for Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and you might be good yeah. to jump in on that too. Um, <laughs> yeah, this program is not for physics majors at all. Um, physics won't give you credit if you're a physics major, so you don't want to do that. Um, there are other programs that UCAP offers where you can actually go to other universities and take physics courses the same way you would take them here. And so if you are a physics major, that's, that's something you want to look at and not this. Um, and then the other was what, EBE? Um, so I'm assuming the student who asked the question is an EBE major. So mm -hmm. it sounds like they're looking for uh, a program where they could work on their Revell G, uh, Revell oh, Revell GEs. Uh -huh. and their, um, their EBE okay. biology requirements. Sure. Okay. So if, if you want to use any courses for general ed, that's always a question to ask of your college. So they make that decision. And so if you have a physics or a science requirement, you think this might um, you know, fulfill. That would be a question for your college academic advising. 
And then um, Rachel, do you do you want to talk a little bit about EBE since that's your area? Sure, yeah. So I was just going to say that in our office, we do advising by country as well as by discipline. So I'm the biology advisor. And I would be happy to, to meet with you one-on-one -on -one if you want to talk about programs that might be a good fit for you as a Ravel and EBE major. Um, we also on the studyabroad.ucsd.edu website, which is our homepage. Um, if you click on students and then click on uh, pro find a program, you can see all the different types of programs that we offer. And I would certainly take a look at UCEAP and they do have find a program um, option where you could do a search and then say that you're biology, you wanna take classes in English, you wanna go in the summer or you wanna go in the fall and it will spit out a whole long list of options available to you. So, um, but I'm happy to meet with you as well. And then when you go to our homepage, if you click on advising services, we do have a virtual front desk. You can click on that Zoom link um, during our hours that we list and our front desk um, student worker can schedule an appointment um, with me. So um, that's available. And then just moving on to another question, Kim, this- Sure, this can you, wait, could you just advance the slide before we do that? Oh, sure. Because that's got the- um, Oh yeah. Okay, the there we go. Desk here. And then, um, and then I'm advising for summer physics. If you want to schedule a Zoom appointment with me, I'm happy to do that. Next week is good for me. I know all of you are scrambling with finals, um, but we can also meet after you've submitted the application. So, you know, whichever works for all of you, no problem. So again, you know, you can email me or you can contact the virtual advising center. So sorry, Rachel, go ahead. Okay, so the it, this is a little off um, topic, but this question is, this isn't exactly within the scope of this presentation, but I was wondering if you have any recommendations for study abroad programs with upper division astrophysics courses. So it's pretty specific. Yeah, very specific. Uh, not off the top of my head. Um, again, Rachel was uh, mentioning the sort of the resource within, you know, within UCAP, the search function. Um, you know, you could take a look at that. Um, but you could schedule an appointment probably with any one of us in the office and we could help you sort of look through what some of those resources might be. Yeah, and I was just going to say that probably the Eng like English speaking countries would sure. be the ones to focus on like England, Scotland, Ireland, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, um, Hong Kong. What do you think about um, Scandinavia? Scandinavia? Potentially, um, but, we have to look. but I think the English speaking countries are going to probably be your, I'm guessing are your best bet. Um, and then the other thing, Kim, just to add into the virtual front desk is we do have on our advising page, uh, peer advising, and that might be a good resource mm -hmm. for, for you. They can show you how to use the, the search feature on the EAP website and go through all that with you as well. Right. And we do have on our site under academics that well, major advising pages, which I can't remember if you mentioned Rachel. And so, um, there should, there is a major advising page for physics for physics majors. So um, you might, you know, take a look at that as well. But as Rachel was listing programs in English, there are a number of locations where you wouldn't expect the courses to be in English, like the Netherlands, like Germany, like the Scandinavian countries, you know, but there are a lot of courses, particularly STEM courses that are taught in English in these locations. So um, it doesn't have to be solely England or Australia, you know, where we know they speak English, but there are some other locations out there. And again, that's something that we can help you with. Okay, Kim. So that's the lot. That was the last question. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're set. So again, you know, we thank you all for being here this afternoon. We hope this has been helpful. Please do feel free to reach out to me or to Rachel. Um, and, you know, we are here to help and here to get you abroad and fingers crossed that these programs will happen uh, in summer 21. So we're really hopeful. So thanks everybody. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye all.